Okay, let's talk about how to solve this proportion. So obviously I'm saying this is a proportion. And one of the things I wanna explain uh, in this video is just quickly, what is a proportion? Okay, so we're talking about solving a proportion. So it's probably a good idea to know what one is. And related with that, we're gonna talk about these other words called uh, rates and ratios. So all these uh, are terms that are kind of interrelated when we're talking about proportions. We often are talking about rates or ratios and fractions, et cetera. So this will be a quick little uh, lesson on these topics, extremely important in mathematics. So, um, you know, if you're struggling with this, I think I'm going to be able to help you out big time. Okay, so before we get started, let me go ahead and introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher, and over many years I've constructed uh, a really huge library of uh, math instruction, okay? So I have multiple courses at the middle and high school math level. So if you need to take a full math course and you like my teaching style uh, or want help with the course you're taking, I'm going to leave a link to uh, uh, my math help program in the description of this video. <clears throat> also, if you need some uh, notes, uh, you should be taking good notes. You really want to strive to take the best uh, math notes as, as possible. I've actually done a, quite a bit of videos on that, but it's a skill that, you know, it takes time to develop into a great note taker. But if you want a good, uh, a really great pair of notes, I offer notes as well. Uh, you can pick up a pair, uh, just follow the links in the description. For proportions, if you're kind of studying this, I would suggest maybe like pre-algebra, but I offer um, algebra, geometry, algebra two, trigonometry notes, etc. So you can check those out if you like. So now let's get into this problem. Okay, so we'll do this problem, but first let me explain to you what a proportion is. So proportion, okay. So what is a proportion? Well, a proportion is nothing more than two equal fractions. That's it, okay? So let's go ahead and put a fraction down here. Let's say the fraction one half. And now uh, let's think of a fraction okay, that's not one half, but it's equal to one half. In other words, something equivalent to uh, the fraction one half. So give me a fraction or think of one that's the same as one half if you reduce it. Okay, so let's say, oh, I don't know, let's say 5 over 10, right? We can use any fraction that's equivalent to 1 half. So 1 half is equal to 5 over 10, right? So if we reduce this, we get to this fraction. That is all uh, what a proportion is, okay? A proportion is simply two fractions that are equal to one another. That's it. And one of the uh, big properties about proportions, we're going to use that to solve this problem, is something called the cross product, okay? Meaning that if in fact you have a valid proportion, i.e. two equal fractions, when you multiply across, the cross products are equal to one another. So for example, one times 10, okay, you can see I'm multiplying across, is gonna be equal to two times five, all right? And we can see one times 10 is 10, two times five is 10, okay? So <clears throat> when you have a legitimate proportion, all right, the cross products are true. So oftentimes when you're studying proportions, um, you know, you'll see questions like, is this a proportion? Okay, something like that, right? So the way to check is check the cross product. There you go like this, three times four, that's 12. Seven times one is seven. Oop, those are not equal to one another, so this is not a proportion, okay? All right, so, that's what a proportion is. Nothing more than two equal fractions. Now, let's get into these other terms, rates and ratios, okay? Okay, so rates and ratios, I can do a whole another full lesson on this, but effectively, these are fractions, okay? Rates and ratios are types of fractions. So a proportion can be two equal ratios or two equal rates. So we can have one rate that's equal to another rate Okay, that is a proportion, right? Now, let's quickly just define what uh, a rate is and a ratio is. So a rate, okay, is a fraction where we're going to be, both of these here, let me just kind of back up here, we're going to be um, putting some units of measure on, units of measure. So we're not just going to be using numbers, we're going to be using some uh, actual um, information. So for example, a rate 
would be, uh, let's just do something like this, 20 miles per one gallon, okay? 20 miles per gallon. So a rate is a fraction. Now here is a fraction. This is 20 over one, okay? It's still in, uh, a fraction. But look at the units of measure, okay? We have miles up here and gallons down here. So this is distance and this is uh, volume, right? So the units of measure are completely different. So 20 miles in the fraction bar, we would refer to as that little word per, okay? So 20 miles per gallon. This is an example of a rate. So um, a rate is when the units of measure, okay, between the numerator and the denominator are different. They're measuring different conceptual things. So this is measuring um, uh, distance and this is measuring volume, okay? So this is an example of a rate. All right, another thing would be, let's see, like let's talk about speed, right? How you're going 80 miles per hour. So when you say oh, 80 miles per hour, no, that's the rate of the car, okay? We think of it as a velocity, but really 80 miles per hour, we can write as 80 miles per one hour, okay? Again, miles in distance, and this is time, okay? Units of measure are completely different. All right, let's take a look at ratios real quick. And again, I'm spending time on this uh, because when you're studying proportion problems, you're gonna be dealing with rates and ratios because this is a fraction. So you can have two equal rates or two equal ratios. Let's talk about ratios. Okay, so ratios, um, you might guess, where the, if the units of measure for rates were different, well, maybe the units of measure over here for ratios are gonna be the same and you would be correct. So. Let's take a look at something like this. Uh, 20 uh, students to 20 students to one teacher. Okay. So this is a ratio. This is the student teacher ratio, right? Uh, 20 students to one teacher. Well, let's write it this way, actually. One teacher, one teacher to 20 students. Okay. Same thing, right? It's, this is a fraction, one over 20. Now it's one teacher uh, uh, per, uh, to one teacher to 20 students. So um, you'll hear this for schools. You know, you might be interested in, but hey, what's the student-teacher ratio? How many teachers per stu uh, students? Okay, uh, or how many teachers to how many students are going to be in the classroom? So you might be saying, well, the units of measure are different here. This is teacher and students, but no, we're measuring conceptually. What are we measuring here? We're, both of these are measuring people. Okay, human beings, right? So even though you might think that your teacher is not a human being, <laughs> I get that. No, they still fall in the classification of a, uh, a human, right? Uh, especially math teachers, okay? So anyways, so one teacher to 20 students, we're, we're counting, you know, bodies, right, if you will. So the concepts are the same. We're over here, we're um, uh, defining or talking about completely different concepts. This is distance, this is volume, this is distance, this is time, okay? So proportions uh, are two equal fractions, but here we have a fraction, a ratio. So a proportion could be two equal fraction or two equal ratios or two equal rates, okay? So anyways, that's a quick crash, crash course on what a proportion is, rates and ratios, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so obviously, this is just a quick review lesson to clear up any, maybe any confusion uh, you might have on the subject. Now we're going to get into solving proportions, okay? So um, if you need more direct instruction, reinforcement on this, and, you know, this video is a quick review tutorial, then you definitely want to check out, uh, like, my math, uh, maybe, like, my pre-algebra, algebra 1 course, whatnot. But you got to be able to solve proportions. These kind of problems are everywhere, not only in algebra, but in geometry and uh, standardized test, etc. All right, so let's get back to this problem here. Okay, now we have um, x over 5 equals 3 over 10. So if I tell you to solve the proportion, you're saying, oh, this is a proportion, therefore the cross products are equal. And what I'm looking for is the value of x. I'm trying to find the value of x such that this fraction here is equal to 3 tenths, okay? So how do I do that? Well, I'm gonna need to apply some basic algebra. So 10 times x is going to be, well, let's just write it out this way. 10 times x is equal to five times three, okay? That is the cross product. Now, there are other ways 
you can solve proportions. Uh, some newer curriculum kind of um, use uh, different techniques, let's just say. This is, you can't go wrong with the cross product. This is like old school math, old school, it works. This is good stuff. You remember the cross product, you'll be just fine, okay? Um, there's other uh, uh, properties or proportions I could get into, yada, yada, yada. But if you just remember the uh, the the uh, cross product, you'll be able to do pretty much all the problems, okay? So just, you know, however you're being taught, just remember this. Now, some I have heard of... <clears throat> Some teachers or some schools, you know, wanting to see proportion problems done in a particular way. All right. So, you know, respect what your teacher is telling you. If they have some sort of, you know, um, you know, particular technique they want you to master, then master that. But guess what? All right. Put this in your back pocket because this is the majority of proportion problems are going to be done using uh, the cross product. All right. Let's get back to this problem. So 10x is equal to 5 times 3. This is what the cross product tells us if this is a legitimate uh, proportion. So we got 10x is equal to 15. Okay. So you can't escape basic algebra here. So now to solve for x, you divide both sides of the equation by 10. So x is going to be equal to 15 over 10. Of course, 5 goes into 15, 3. 5 goes into 10, 2. Okay, so there is our answer, 3 halves. Okay, now, I just kind of randomly kind of did a proportion here just so we can kind of practice. But let's go and do a few more examples, right? Now, of course, you're going to have to know how to work with basic um, you know, algebra equation. So let's do, let's say y, well, let's put the variable in a different place, actually. Let's say uh, 8 over y is equal to, oh, I don't know, uh, 2 over 10, okay? So if you think you know how to solve this, okay, of course, you, should, you already have all the information you need, okay? You're going to be applying the cross product and solving for the variable y, okay? And, uh, then we'll do this together. So if you want to pause the video before um, I do it, do a little quick pop quiz for yourself. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, tackle this problem. So again, we're going to use a cross product, so y times 2. Now, you don't you want to write that as y2, right? In algebra, we always put the um, number in front of the variable. So that's going to be 2. I could do better than that. 2y, okay? 8 times 10, of course, is 80. All right. Okay, so at this point, what do I need to do to solve for y? That's it. I simply divide both sides of the equation by 2, and I get y is equal to 40. Okay, so y is equal to 40. So let's just kind of, you know, uh, check that here, right? So we're saying that 8 over 40 is equal to 2 tenths. Well, if I reduce the fraction 2 tenths, I'm going to get, what, 1 fifth. And if I reduce the fraction... 8 over 40, I am also going to get the fraction 1 fifth, okay? Because 8 goes into 45 times. So uh, you can kind of see, hey, this is working out for us. Let's take a look at one more proportion problem because these can get much more complex. This time, let's make a little bit, uh, a little bit of a fancier situation. Uh, let's see here. How about this? Okay, so let's see how your algebra is. Uh, let's go ahead and solve the proportion, all right? So again, you're going to be using the cross product. If you want to try this problem on your own, I would suggest you go in and do so. But we're going to be using the cross product and just solving for x, okay? It's another opportunity to solve algebra equations, which is one of the funnest things you could possibly do. All right, so 2 times x plus 1, okay? We have to write that like this, 2 times x plus 1. And that's going to be equal to 3 times 7, which, of course, is, what, 21. Okay, so at this point, really, we're going to have to go ahead and uh, know how to solve these basic algebra equations, right? So this is going to be 2 times x is 2x, and then 2 times 1 is 2. So don't mess up on the distributive property. That's equal to 21. Now what I need to do is what? I need to subtract 2 from both sides of the equation. And I get 2x is equal to, let's see if I, my basic arithmetic is good today, I should get 19, right? And then finally, to solve for 2x is equal to 19, divide both sides of the equation by 2, 
And so I get x is equal to 19 halves. Now I could turn it into a decimal if I like, or a mixed number, but that's the value such that I plug in it right there that would make this fraction equal to this fraction. So that's what it means uh, to have a proportion. Now, you can have proportions, or something could be in proportion, and these are related topics uh, in uh, mathematics you're gonna see in geometry and other algebra problems. But, you know, that's kind of like uh, a little bit, that's like the application of using proportions, okay? But first of all, you gotta learn what a proportion is and how to solve them. And related to that, again, is rates and ratios, all right? Fractions, rates, and ratios, all good stuff. Just absolutely need to know this. Now, if you need more practice with this, um, uh, hopefully you'll, you're going to become a new subscriber to my channel. If you're not already uh, subscribed to my channel, I already have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of videos on my channel that can help you out. Uh, as you could probably tell, I love teaching math. So I have some more um, problems on ratios and rates and proportions, but you really need to practice this stuff to master it. So I would strongly suggest, you know, if you're checking out my uh, my math help program, uh, you know, or I do my full, complete, comprehensive direct instruction. So if you know if you're lost in math, let's just say if you really, really need formal help, then you want to get the the kind of help, you know, um, that's required to fix whatever you're struggling with. And if you're str really struggling in math, YouTube and stuff is good, really good. It can help you, but it's not going to be enough. You need to practice this stuff. The only way you're going to retain and really master this is by practicing what you learn and checking, you know, having someone explain every single problem. That's what I really do in my math help program. So you can see some sample videos there. And then, of course, you can uh, pick up a pair of notes, which has a good reference. You always got to have notes. All right. So with that being said, um, by the way, too, if you like this video, uh, please feel free if the video was in proportion to how much you liked it, smash that like button, <laughs> if you will. But uh, listen. I certainly appreciate your time. I wish you nothing but all the best in your mathematics adventures and have a great day.